हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द डे टू ऑफ द मशीन लर्निंग टीच बाय डूइंग प्रोजेक्ट माय नेम इज डॉक्टर राज दांडेकर एंड आई हैव अ पीएचडी इन मशीन लर्निंग फ्रॉम एम आई टी वी स्टार्टेड दिस प्रोजेक्ट एस्टरडे एंड द मेन एम ऑफ दिस इज टू इंस्पायर यू टू ट्रांजिशन टू मशीन लर्निंग एज मैंशनड ऑन डे वन आई एल बी लर्निंग अलॉन्ग विथ एवरी वन ऑफ यू i'll be forming agenda for what to learn and every day i'll be posting lecture notes uh, reference material and videos such as this going through what i learned on day 0 which was yesterday we made a plan for uh, what we are planning to or what we will go through this course essentially we made a plan to have a good mix of uh, fundamental or theoretical machine learning which we will learn from MIT's 6.036 which is intro to ml course and we will supplement it with practical knowledge um, or hands on coding demonstrations which we will learn from the microsoft course titled machine learning for beginners so let's get started with today's lecture in which it will be all about introduction to machine learning so yesterday after making the plan and today i went through um, intro to ml from both the mit course and this microsoft course so first tell let me tell you exactly what i went through uh, when you open this mit 6.036 intro to machine learning course for those who have not seen the previous lecture you will need to create an account here it's fully free but once you create an account you will be greeted with the entire lecture material which is taught at mit so what i did is uh, i went to this basics module i went to introduction to ml here and uh, then here is what all i have went through yesterday and today i watched this video on introduction to ml perspective and history i watched this video on introduction to ml estimation and generalization i watched this video on supervised learning setting supervised learning hypothesis evaluation for predictions loss functions evaluating hypothesis training set error and i also watched the video on learning algorithms all of these videos are pretty small i would say around 4 to 5 minutes each and you can see they are organized here so this symbol is for videos and this symbol is for lecture notes which are interspersed throughout this particular uh, course so i went through 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 videos here and uh, i'll soon go through what all i learned from all of these videos and in the microsoft ml for beginners course i went through uh, i went through the first three lessons i went through the lesson on introduction to machine learning which is here the history of machine learning and fairness and machine learning for everything i maintain detailed notes so here are the notes which i maintained from the microsoft course and uh, here are the notes which i maintained from uh, the mit's uh, 6.036 which is introduction to ml course in this particular lecture uh, i will condense everything which i learned about introduction to machine learning from these sources so let me first get started from what i learned in this microsoft's uh, course so when you click on the lesson here you will be greeted with the intro to ml uh, page the first thing which i learned is that machine learning is really everywhere all around us it is impacting our day to day life in every single sector i learned about alpha go which is basically a game in which ai has learned to beat humans similar to chess i learned that ibm conducted a match with um the leading chess grandmaster gary kasparov and ibm's ai defeated gary kasparov who was the best chess player in the world in 
Now AI has repeatedly started beating humans at games such as AlphaGo, chess, etc. I also learned that AI is revolutionizing um, the content which we consume, such as Netflix, Amazon. Wherever we see recommendation systems, such as recommended for you, you must have seen in Netflix, or you must have seen in YouTube. What you see on YouTube is very very different from what I see on YouTube, because YouTube learns. the way i interact with it and the way you interact with it and so our feed is different even netflix has a recommended for you section all of these are applications of machine learning machine learning is also completely revolutionizing healthcare such as drug discovery cancer diagnosis and not just that even consumer applications like phone assistants such as siri alexa and then even it's helping in financial predictions such as stock market prediction or character recognition for doctors or postmen and of course all of you must be familiar with the face detection or recognition such as the facial unlock or the fingerprint unlock which we have on our phone all of these are examples of machine learning before starting this lecture um, i did not know what is the difference between ml and ai but this lecture really opened my eyes as to what is the difference between machine learning artificial intelligence and deep learning i'll come to that in some point so my first learning was that machine learning is literally all around us even in your day to day life from the moment you wake up interact with your phones um a phone assistant then siri the home assistant netflix youtube face unlock fingerprint unlock voice assistant and then even in all the other sectors such as education sector uh chat gpt drug discovery healthcare sector cancer diagnosis using ai ml or machine learning is literally impacting every single sector of human experience the second thing which i learned and uh, which was really good for me to learn was that the hype surrounding machine learning what you must be very curious or interested to learn is that the hype around ml was not the same um, at all times in history in fact we are living at a time when ml hype is really at its peak so i went to uh, google trends uh, and i typed here machine learning and then i selected india and then i selected 2004 to present here you can see that in 2004 the interest over the interest was very less whereas see right now the interest has almost increased by 100 to 200 times and we are living here at an age where people are extremely interested in machine learning and it's completely revolutionizing everything around us this is one more reason why learning machine learning is so important at this stage because so many people care about this field i also saw that you can hear have a worldwide interest over time and not just in india throughout the entire world the interest in machine learning is just skyrocketing here you can see the countries which have the most interest and of course india ranks third year south korea is fifth etc so my second big learning was that the ml hype or the ai hype which we see everywhere around us is not the same as it was before and the roots for why this is the case lie in the history of machine learning when i teach you about the history of ml you will realize why there is so much hype about it right now and why there is there was less hype in all these years then i learned about uh, what is really the definition of artificial intelligence or how we can start thinking about ai in the first place so consider a child's brain we are constantly receiving inputs from our surroundings so here you see uh, let me use this marker and draw here so here you see we are constantly receiving input from our surroundings this is very important input from our surroundings and we are finding patterns in everything which we see around us this is how we develop intelligence this is how we start to discover the things around us so we learn continuously by discovering hidden patterns this is very important and those patterns enable us to make decisions 
this is how intelligence originates in human brains so uh, ai now let's come to how to think of ai so before coming to artificial intelligence first let us look at intelligence itself when we look at intelligence what do we mean is something which takes input from the real world it processes it and then it performs decisions that is the hallmark of an intelligent person or an intelligent machine or that is the hallmark of behaving intelligently this is exactly something to keep in mind when you think of artificial intelligence let's say if a machine does the similar things as what we discussed before let's say the machine receives information it processes the information identifies patterns and then makes decisions that is called as an intelligent machine so then that is the field of artificial intelligence the study of intelligent machines governs the field of artificial intelligence humans are born with natural intelligence right ai is when you program machines to take inputs from the environment identify patterns and then take a decision that is artificial intelligence now you must be thinking that throughout this video i am using ai sometimes i am using ml what is the true difference behind artificial intelligence and machine learning so one of the main objectives of today's lesson is to really uh, understand this particular graph or this particular plot which teaches the difference between artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning and also data science it is important to note that all of these four things are completely different from each other uh, the broadest umbrella or the largest terminology is ai under this comes everything else so as we saw ai is the so let me refresh this page it has become a bit slow okay let's come to this particular graph again so as we saw ai is the uh, machines which mimic human intelligence so ai or artificial intelligence is machines which mimic human intelligence then what is machine learning machine learning is basically using data to help machines learn and make better predictions so the key here is data it's quite difficult to write using this maybe since to after tomorrow's lectures i'll use a trackpad to write but data so data is the key here so in machine learning we utilize data to help machines learn and make better predictions ai on the other hand is just machines which mimic human intelligence let us take a practical example to understand the difference let's say we have a restaurant chatbot which is rule based which means that the chatbot is trained with predefined input and predefined output let's say it is trained with 100 inputs such as what time does the restaurant open what cuisine do you have um do you serve this this particular thing what time do you close where are you located there are fixed set of 100 inputs and we train the chatbot that whenever you receive a particular input you give this particular output so let's say there is this example of a chatbot where uh, it is a rule based chatbot with 100 inputs and 100 fixed output can you think whether this is an example of ai or this is an example of ml or this is an example of both okay so first of all uh, this is definitely an intelligent machine because it is performing a task it is taking an input and it is performing a task this is exactly the definition what we saw about ai great so that so this rule based chatbot is definitely an example of ai now let's look at machine learning is any learning happening here is the chatbot learning based on what the user provides or based on the questions of the user 
No. The chatbot is essentially not learning from data. The chatbot is not learning based on previous user interactions. It is rule based chatbot, which means there are inputs and there are fixed outputs. It will only give output based on the rule which is given. So the chatbot is not really learning as it interacts with humans. That's why this is not an example of machine learning. Then it comes under this particular area here, which is an example of AI and which is not an example of ML. Whereas if you see every single thing around us, such as Alexa or Siri, which is the phone assistant, all of these are examples of machines which learn based on user interaction. If you interact with Siri or if you interact with Alexa, it will customize you based on you as a user and then it will change its responses. When you interact with Netflix for a longer period of time, it understands the kind of movies you like. So the machine is learning and that's why these are examples of machine learning. So they come under this category and since ML is a subset of AI, they are definitely examples of AI as well. So the key thing to remember is that ML is a subset of AI. Then you might ask what is DL or deep learning? Deep learning is specifically to do with neural networks. So I'll just write N N here, N and N which is neural networks. So whenever neural networks are used in machine learning algorithms, it comes under the category of deep learning. Not all machine learning algorithms employ neural networks. Uh, and hence DL or deep learning is a subset of ML or machine learning. And the final category, which is very important is data science. Data science is basically just understanding patterns from data and making intelligent predictions. It does have some inter intersections with, with AI, ML and DL, but it also has so many other methods which are not related to AI, such as statistical methods, etc. So data science is understanding patterns from a data and making predictions. It does have some overlap with AI, but as I said, it has several other statistical methods which do not overlap with AI at all. This was a big learning for me when I took this particular uh, or when I went through these courses in yesterday and today's uh, uh, lecture notes that AI, ML and deep learning are completely or I should not confuse them. AI is a broader umbrella within that comes ML. So AI is a broader umbrella within that comes ML and within that comes DL and data science is a small intersection with all these, but it also has a large number of other areas which are not related to AI, ML and deep learning. I hope the chatbot example, the rule based chatbot serves as a good distinction of something which is AI, but not ML. Intelligent chatbots like Alexa are of course example of all these three. So this was a big learning for me. The next big learning for me was uh, the history of uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning. So it turns out that uh, why is why is this trend like this? So let us dive a bit into the history. So 1950 is when uh, Alan Turing uh, devised the concept of the Turing test. Or of, or of basically machines which can think. So this is when this idea was thought of. Then 1956 was the year when the term artificial intelligence was actually introduced. This was introduced at the Dartmouth Summer Research Project on Artificial Intelligence. And so this term was introduced during this time. 1956 to 1974 are often referred to as the golden years. During this time, there were several advancements in artificial intelligence which happened, such as this particular robot, which could maneuver and decide how to perform tasks. Look at how big and clunky it was at that time. Remember, this is 1972. This is also a very early version of a chat chatterbot. This is the earliest version of a chatbot. Think of how advanced, think of Alexa or Siri, or how advanced we have become. This particular prototype was published or demonstrated in 1966. So during 1956 to 1974, during the golden years of AI, 
there was a lot of advancement in uh, uh, ai and these things such as shaky the robot or eliza the chatterbot then came the ai winter uh, or basically this was the time when people realized that the promise of ai was maybe overhyped or that ai was not living up to its promise so funding in this particular field dried up and confidence really decreased uh, and this was because of so many reasons first because the there was a really a lack of data and there was a lack of computational power as a result it was very difficult to develop powerful algorithms and during this which means that during this time i did during this time there was a real down wave which means that uh, people really lost confidence and it was probably because there was less amount of data and machines were also not as powerful as they were today the chip revolution was underway more and more transistors were being fit on chips and computing power was increasing exponentially ai just needed the hardware to catch up then comes 1993 to 2011 this is the main time during which ml and ai was able to solve some of the problems which were not solved before and uh, this is probably because the amount of data really increased a lot and became widely available it was also because the compute power increased tremendously uh, more and more transistors were fit on chips uh, the smartphone became extremely powerful so as is written over here compute power really expanded exponentially during this time and there was also development or evolution of algorithms so the field really gained a lot of maturity during this time a lot of research papers were published a lot of uh, funding was diverted in this area and that can clearly be seen here uh, actually if you zoom into uh, 2004 to 2011 you can see the slow increase this slow increase was because of this particular era and right now we can see that ai has touched almost every aspect of our life it is completely revolutionizing everything uh, chat gpt has been developed so essentially now is the time when ai has evolved but at the same time computing power has become very sophisticated that we can run huge algorithms on our machines that is why ai systems have become so powerful uh, for example take a look at uh, brain tumor detection now ai systems are able to look at brain mri scans and able to classify whether brain tumor is present or not to do this we need a machine which can compute or look at large number of images what if this machine was in wasn't even available ai power would not be realized right so the rise of computational power along with essentially more amount of data and the development of new algorithms new research has made ai so important in human lives today so i gained a lot of understanding about the history of ai so in terms of the three biggest learnings my first learning was ml is everywhere my second learning was the difference between ai ml and deep learning and my third biggest learning was the history of ai the history of ml and how we are living at an age where compute power data and algorithms are all increasing exponentially and that is why ai systems have become so powerful these were mostly the learnings from the microsoft course and uh, i have put all of these in the lecture notes so this is the first page of the lecture notes this is the second page of the lecture notes where i go about M ml history then the last two pages of the lecture notes are devoted to what is covered in the mit course regarding introduction to ai and as i mentioned before this course is a bit more theoretical so the description which is given in this particular course is a bit different than the microsoft course but it's very important for us to go through everything in detail so as i told before i went to this introduction to ml part and i looked at all of these videos and in this particular lecture i'll be only going through the intro to ml part in the next lecture we'll be looking at types of ml 
so here are the notes for this the way the mit scores defines machine learning is getting data in some form and aggregating it to make predictions this is how the mit scores defines machine learning getting data in some form and aggregating it to make predictions some examples of this could be netflix recommendation text autocomplete chat gpt or several other examples which we saw, saw here but again the important thing which i also iterated here is that ml really leverages data a lot and insights from data so the basic idea of ml is using data to make predictions uh, second thing which i learned here is that people have apparently tried since many years to recognize faces by looking at nose ears eyes etc but they were unable to do that then people figured out that instead of trying to write a program to recognize a face why don't we write a program that can analyze the data which decides how to recognize a face so this is a bit higher level instead of trying to write a program to recognize a face people realize that why don't we write a program that can analyze the data to decide how to recognize the face this was the beginning of using ml for facial recognition again you can focus on the importance of data here another misconception which uh, many students have about ml is that it is like a magic box which takes in data and then predicts some awesome things but it's not really like that at all in fact humans really have a big role to play in setting up the machine learning program or in getting machine learning solutions to a particular problem the role of humans in this is extremely important and machine learning is not just a black box in fact this mit scores looks at a six step procedure um, to see what we can do to make ml applications work so let's say you want to develop a new ml application this mit scores mention six steps to make this application work and uh, we will of course go through these six steps uh, in tomorrow's lecture but very broadly speaking the steps are as follows the first step is to get data second step is to think of the space of all possible solutions third step is to characterize what makes a good solution or how can we distinguish between solutions that this is a good solution or this is not the fourth step is finding the algorithm or finding the machine learning algorithm step 5 is running the algorithm and step 6 is validating the result the important thing to note here is that out of all of these six steps except for step 5 users or humans have to do all other steps step 5 is running the algorithm this is the only part which the computer does for us all the other steps including getting the data thinking of the space of possible solutions characterizing what makes a good solution finding the algorithm and validating the result humans have to take care of all of these other steps so machine learning is not just like a magic box really humans have to do a lot of work humans have a big role to play in developing an ml solution so when you look at all the ml or ai solutions around you like netflix youtube amazon uh, alexa siri everything there are essentially the six steps which some human or some programmer or a developer has gone through to develop that particular ml solution the last thing which i learned in this particular mit's introduction to ml is that ml really focuses a lot more on generalization so let us say you are sitting in a room and you are collecting the temperature measurements so day 1 it's 25 degree celsius day 2 is 23 degree celsius day 3 is 24 degree celsius so uh, ml the main question which machine learning asks is what is the temperature on day 4 based on your previous data can you predict what is the temperature on day 4 this is a generalization problem or it's a forecasting problem it's a very hard question to answer because we do not know anything about what is to come in the future right and that is the main goal of machine learning is to help focus on generalization think of weather systems or climate systems 
so if i go to weather near me right now if i go to weather forecast i am in bangalore so i can see that there is some amount of forecasting which is done how is this system making these forecasts some machine learning algorithm is definitely being deployed here so this again proves the point that machine learning focuses more on generalization rather than estimation great so these were the condensed learnings from the mit's course on the intro to ml of course this particular course has more things to do with respect to uh, explaining these six steps and also types of ml so here the there is also a special section on types of ml but i have reserved it for tomorrow for today all i wanted to cover was regarding the introduction to ml and all my learnings so just summarizing my learnings about what i learned today first i learned that ml is everywhere right from games like alpha go recommendation systems drug discovery character recognition voice assistant face detection cancer diagnosis second the ml hype we live in a unique time where computing power algorithm research and large amount of data availability have all merged together to make ml applications or ai applications really powerful thirdly i learned about the difference between ai ml and dl ai is the broader set which encompasses ml which further encompasses deep learning to think of a way to distinguish between ai and ml think of a rule based chatbot that is an example of ai but it is not an example of ml because the chatbot is not learning based on human interactions then we also learned about the history of ai history of ml how machine learning has basically evolved up to this stage we also looked at uh, the mit's course and how it defines machine learning as getting data in some form and aggregating it to make predictions so every single ml application which you see around you really boils down to this definition all major applications based on text audio image etc we saw that ml is not just a mag magic box or a black box which takes in data and predicts super amazing things humans really have a big role to play in making the ml solution work the role which humans have to pay humans have to play uh, is summarized in the six steps getting data thinking of the space of possible solutions characterizing what makes a good solution finding the algorithm running the algorithm and validating the result out of these six steps only the step number 5 which is running the algorithm is the part which the computer does for us users or humans have to do all the other steps finally we saw that machine learning really focuses a lot on generalization more than estimation generalization or forecasting is a much harder problem such as weather forecasting but this is what powerful ml techniques enable us to do thank you students or thank you anyone who is watching this particular lecture and uh, i hope you are with me please uh, follow the notes which i am making as i go along please have a look at these videos and please stick with me throughout this journey uh, the reason i am following this journey exactly with you is so that you don't lose inspiration or motivation so please follow with me i am spending about 1 and 1/2 to 2 hours every day to go through these videos to make detailed notes and you have to follow a similar rigor or a similar practice if you miss some lectures you can cover it up later but make sure to cover it up in the next lecture or in the next session of this teach by doing project we'll be looking at the types of ml models thank you and i'll see you in the next video